Oh, good morning, everyone. This is Lori Vinicor, president of the Alliance of Delray Residential Associations. Welcome to our August 2nd meeting here. A few highlights of this past week, we had a public meeting with FDOT where uh, we uh, were explained the expansion of Atlantic Avenue and where they're at. We sent out in our newsletter online, we sent out a synopsis of that meeting and we also will be sent, putting it into our September newsletter. And we also sent links out, important links that you'll be able to see the plan of Atlantic Avenue, the way it stands right now. And for some very important announcement here, September meeting, our first Wednesday in September, we're going to have an insurance panel discussion and we will be having some of our Palm Beach County legislative delegation attend. Senator Polsky, Representative Skidmore, Representative Casello, Representative Silvers will be there. And our mayor of Palm Beach County, Mayor Weiss also expects to attend. That's going to be an important meeting about all of our insurance issues. Let's try to come to some, some resolution to the expenses that are uh, that are occurring for all of our homeowner associations and our condo associations. So that will be a time where you will be able to speak and ask questions at our meeting in September at the South County Civic Center. Right now, we are going to, I didn't spotlight myself either, see. There you go. We're going to spotlight different people here. We have first, our Captain Sant is going to be giving us an update. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. I haven't got a chance to see you all in a while, but we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back, what, live uh, in September, Laura? Yes, September. Mm -hmm. All right, good. A lot of things have happened uh, over the summer. Uh, I'm sure you guys are experiencing it the, uh, the same way I am. It's, it's hot. It's hot. It's causing people to do some crazy things, right, Chief? Uh, that's uh, right. <laughs> The, uh, the heat affects us all differently. Uh, I'd like to blame it, uh, our recent spike in auto thefts and <clears> auto burglaries <throat> on the heat, but I don't know if I can get away with that. Uh, it's nothing uh, earth shattering and alarming and, and not suspected. Uh, we've seen this uh, last summer, the summer months, but we have a spike in auto burglaries and auto thefts. And let me just clarify something for y'all. It's not just in the high the high-end communities or gated communities, we're having a, a spike as well in throughout the district and really throughout the region and agency as a whole. Uh, they're targeting high-end <laughs> vehicles within the gated communities, but they're they're not picky. They're they're collecting cars and uh, plazas and, and non-gated communities, and there's a lot of uh, commonalities here. All right, we're looking at suspects coming up from Broward. Uh, and we also have a local group uh, out of Delray Beach, West, uh, the city of Delray Beach, that they hit us for about 18 or 20 auto burglaries right here locally. And they smashed the windows. And for the cars that were locked, they smashed the windows. And the rest of them were unlocked. We're finding a lot of key fobs and keys left in the car. All right. So, uh, listen, a criminal's going to do what they do. But let's just not make it easy for them. All right. We're not blaming the victims in no way, shape, or form, but let's, uh, we can do better. Let's, let's slow them down a little bit, give us a chance to get there. Uh, and it works because the other night over in Dakota, there was uh, just that, in fact, uh, security called. The vehicles, I believe, were locked up, so bad guys couldn't, couldn't get it so readily. By the time they did get in there, the deputies got there, intercepted them on the way out. Uh, we avoided a chase because the bad guys realized how many police, the deputies were around them, and decided to flee from the vehicle right here at the turnpike. Unfortunately, because they scattered in a bunch of different directions on the turnpike, uh, I'm glad the deputies didn't start chasing them along the turnpike on foot. They got away, but it's all right. We'll we'll get them. We'll get them. We they know now coming back into the area, they're uh, they're going to be challenged. They're going to be caught if they stay. So please, take away, lock your car, take the key fobs out, put it in a uh, in your home in a safe spot away from the front door, please. Uh, and number two is please remove all your valuables, especially your firearms, from the interior of that car. We're, we're getting a lot of guns being stolen from the cars. All right, uh, let's move on to traffic. Uh, we're slightly up a little bit in traffic. I'd like to see that number come down. Uh, we're doing okay, all things considered. 
Uh, we just wrapped up our drag racing operation on 441, yielded some pretty good results. Uh, we learned a lot of a uh, few things from it, but we taught a lot of lessons uh, as well to these individuals. Uh, just a quick synopsis, about 182 stops just along that operation. We wrote about 107 citations and 25 criminal citations and a, and a handful of warnings. Right? For those of those and for those warnings were for the individuals that were complying and we feel like that stay out of the area. Just so you guys know, uh, the deputies are out there full force in between everything else they're doing, over 5,300 stops year to date, that's traffic stops year to date. So they're, they're active out there. I really think that has a real big impact also on our traffic crashes and bringing that number down. Last but not least, we're getting ready to go back to school. The, uh, the kids are getting ready. Um, facilities are getting ready. Fa faculties are getting ready. we got some operation plans in place. So please give yourself some extra time uh, in the morning and afternoon and be sure you know your surroundings as you go through those school zones. All right. Anything else I forgot or you need to ask, just come see me or call me. Anything else, doctor? That's great. Thank you so much for the update. Thank you That's for great. protecting us. We do our best. And we, yes. And here is another person who helps us, protects us and takes care of us. Our chief, Chief Bill Sansbury. Great to see you. Hello, Dr. Vinegar. Thank you for having me. Um, as Captain Sands said, the weather is very hot. So there's been lots of uh, calls with weather related incidents. A lot of people are getting dehydrated. They're outside a lot, sweating a lot, and they don't uh, drink a lot of the water. They forget that they're losing through their sweat. So it's very important to stay hydrated, uh, drink lots of fluid, and try not to be outside for too long if you can help it. Um, the calls in uh, Battalion 4 area were very uh, pretty uh Consistent over the summer months, uh, we don't have as many snowboards that go back as often. It seems like people are staying here year-round now. There was over 3,000 calls in the month of July. Station 45, which is on Linden Jog, had 585 calls, so they're staying busy. Um, station 45 was having a bunk room expansion and making the station bigger so we could have some more personnel there. That's coming up to a wrap, so that should be finished pretty soon. The cruise have been staying there through the expansion, so uh, but hopefully that'll be completed soon. We're building a new station out on uh, Flavor Picked and Lions, which hopefully it's just going to be a trailer with one rescue truck, um, but hopefully we'll have units in there sometime in September. And then there's another station also going on La Chalet and Military, which is a little further north in the Boynton area, and uh, but that'll have a good trickle down effect and have another rescue in the area. To provide service and help out when needed. Um, there's uh, he was talking about middle uh, schools going back in session. There's a new school, West Boynt Middle School, which is on um, Acme Dairy and Boynt Beach near the Boynt and Lions area. Did a walkthrough of that school yesterday. Very big. It's going to be uh, a lot of students. Going to be crowded and uh, probably very hectic the first few days till parents and students can figure out the good times and good parking and all that situation. So just be patient and uh, try to. Be kind to everybody, and uh, if anyone needs anything, call 911. We're here to help. Thank you. Oh, thank you for that update. We have some elected officials here as well today. We'll start out with Senator Lori Berman. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Dr. Vinicor, and thank you to the Delray Alliance for all that all of you do and the work that you do in our community. Um, very happy to be, you know, part of the community right now. We, as everyone said, these are the dog days of summer, but we are really working right now, which is, which is, you know, crazy. Things are starting to really heat up for the legislature. We go back in session in October and we are working hard on getting our bills organized. So any ideas that you have, because you guys are often the best ideas for bills, call my office um, and set up an appointment. Happy to meet with anyone, talk about different ideas that you have. And we've been going on lots of tours, meeting with constituents who have, you know, you're always welcome at any issues that you have um, concerning state matters. Um, we've been getting a lot of calls about passports and we don't do passports. The federal government, either the Senator or the Congressperson does it. We're happy to refer you um, but uh, just want to let everybody know about that. 
Um, the other thing I want everyone to be aware of is we are going into hurricane season. Um, and, you know, hopefully it will be, we have a mild and hopefully non-eventful season, but we all need to be prepared. Start looking at your hurricane preparation kit, getting your supplies together, getting your, uh, determining if you're gonna stay, if you're gonna evacuate, where you're gonna go, if you're gonna evacuate. We want everyone to be safe. And my office is here to be a resource for that. We are located at Boynton Beach Boulevard and Gateway in the Children's Service Council building. Happy to meet with you, talk with you, and just very uh, proud to represent all of you. I will not be here next month for the insurance panel, but um, I will make sure to have people there and we will monitor it. We know that property insurance is probably the number one issue for everyone in the state right now, um, even renters, because it affects the, the amount of rent that people are paying. So. Um, we're going to continue to work on that issue and hopefully make some progress. So thank you all so much for being here and for allowing me to be part of this program. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending. And we will now have our vice mayor, Maria Sachs, update. Thank you. Uh, let me see. You're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. There you go. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, especially to you, Dr. Vinegar, and to the members of the Alliance. Um, after listening to our law enforcement and uh, our EMS officers, I, always, I just feel a lot safer. Uh, and I have seen a lot more law enforcement presence everywhere in here in uh West Boca and West Del Rey, and I thank you uh, for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we have been doing a lot of things this, uh, this last month. Um, to recap, there was the National Association of Counties that took place, in, and I'm gonna tell you, uh, I have never been to Texas, but I, uh, been, I've driven through Texas many times, but I tell you, I've never been to a place that could be hotter in Florida in August, but I found it. Uh, Austin, Texas stayed at 110, 24 hours a day. So tell you the truth, I was really happy to come back here. Uh, I love the humidity here and uh, the rainstorms. And it was just, uh, other than the weather, it was very, very uh, interesting and informative. I found out uh, learning from other county commissioners from all over the country that everybody has pretty much the same story. Uh, it's called uh, overdevelopment, lack of infrastructure, and uh, lack of ability for people to get from one point to another point within their cities. So we think sometimes that Florida is in a bubble and uh, in some ways we are, because we are a little piece of paradise here. But learning from other cities throughout the country everybody's facing the same issues. And uh, in fact, we walked everywhere that we could in Austin just because of the traffic. Uh, so I brought back some excellent ideas. I also brought back some contacts uh, from uh, folks who are having the same problems as we have in their counties throughout the country. I was very proud to see Dr. Vinegar there at the meeting with FDOT, the public meeting. Uh, and we learned a number of things. I am meeting with them next week at their offices, local offices in Fort Lauderdale. It appears that uh, at first glance that the design for the extension of Atlantic Avenue from the Turnpike to Jog Road is not set, scheduled until 2026, 2027. That's just the design. That's not the beginning of construction. So uh, Senator Berman, I'm glad that you're on and you can hear me. Uh, you and I will be talking uh, before the beginning of next session. And if I'm correct, next session should start in January. Is that, okay, good. She's nodding her head. So we can get a jump on the budget. Um, we need the money to help us in our infrastructure here, especially in the Western communities of West Boca, West Delray, West Boynton. Uh, I also inquired from FDOT 
the progress of the design for an expansion of 441. The response was, what? <laughs> We're not looking at expanding 441 in West Boca, West Del Rey, and West Boynton. So uh, we've got a task ahead of us so that, uh, as I've said before, uh, that shovel doesn't hit the ground until we have the infrastructure in place. I wanna thank our firefighters. They're, they already have a, a trailer up there to help our, our folks uh, with any emergencies in our area. However, if a, a fire truck or a law enforcement vehicle cannot get through uh, to, to help our people because of traffic, uh, then uh, we, haven't done, we haven't done our job. I haven't done my job. I need you to help me do my job. Uh, we have a big vote coming up in October. We'll talk about September meeting. Right now, let's stay cool. Uh, we have a lot of good events going on in our libraries, uh, in, our, in our, uh, our museums that are uh, indoors and air conditioned. And uh, if anybody has any questions, call me. Uh, you have my cell number, I'll give it to you again. It's area code 561-945-8800. Uh, Dr. Vinegar, the last time I did this at your meeting, someone called me up. He said, I just want to make sure that was your phone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and let's wish Vivian uh, Leva a, a speedy recovery. She's been ill, but uh, she'll be coming back. And uh, we wish her a speedy recovery. In the meantime, I'm here all summer. And I look forward to working with uh, all of you. So take care, stay cool. And uh, I'm here for you fighting for you always. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for attending and for the update. And we now have our vice chair of the school board, Karen Brill. Good to see you. It's good to be here. And I'm sorry that I've missed your meetings, Dr. Vinicor, but I had the best reasons ever. So a year and a half ago, I didn't have any grandchildren. And now I have two with another one on the way. So I was helping those new moms who don't live in Florida and traveling, but now I'm back. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we appreciate the shout out about schools this morning at 730. I was at Park Vista Community High School welcoming almost a thousand new teachers to our school district. These teachers are very diverse. We have some that had been teachers, some that are new teachers, some that have changed careers, some who grew up in Palm Beach some who grew up in Florida, some from out of state and some from out of the country. So they reflect our students and I'm very excited. I'm also very, very excited. As you heard from Chief Stansberry, we have a new school out in West Boynton Beach. We have actually two new schools opening up. Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School is on Lions Road. Um, and that's up in the Lake Worth, Lantana area. And then the long awaited for school in District 3, the West Point Middle School. And I've got to tell you, these schools are amazing. If at some point the Alliance would like to tour the West Point Middle School, Dr. Vinicor, let me know. It's not the schools that we grew up in. Let me tell you, they are, it is just simply amazing. I'd love to go back and start all over. And so, yes, school is going to be in session. The buses are going to be hitting the roads now to do their trial runs. So for us, the summer is over. We're back and ready to rock and roll. And I just look forward to seeing you in September and being back with all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much for that update. And it would be interesting to see the schools. Yes, yes. Let's see. Well, we are now going to start with our featured speakers. And we have today property appraiser Dorothy Jacks. So good of you to come. This is a perfect time for you to be explaining about uh, the property appraisal system and your an overview of your office. Thank you so much for attending. Please go ahead and following Dorothy Jacks, we are going to have our tax collector, Ann Yenon, tell us how that all works. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Vinicor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, the Alliance of Delray. It's great to be with you all and with my fellow elected officials. 
Uh, I am always, always, I always enjoy these sorts of things, being able to talk a little bit about our office and tell you what we've been working on and what we have coming this summer, because unlike a lot of places, we are very busy in the summer. We are getting ready to mail our 2023 Notice of Proposed Property Taxes uh, every year this time of year after we have valued all the property in Palm Beach County, all 650,000 parcels of property and 50,000 tangible accounts, we then certify the tax roll to the taxing authorities who then set a millage rate. And it is the millage rate times the value that equals the tax that you will actually pay in November. But before November comes, our office is required to mail you a notice disclosing all of this good information about your property value and your taxes, what they potentially will be. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and tell you about the notice and also just see if you have any questions for us about how it works. So the notice looks like this. I know this is very old fashioned, but I'm gonna hold up a, <laughs> an actual notice and show you it's because it does, it just looks like this. It's a nice uh, two-sided piece of paper. Make sure you look at both sides. One side will contain your taxes and I draw your attention to the green area which we intentionally made green because it is actually in the end what your proposed taxes what your taxes will probably be they will be no higher than the number totaled up in the green column so that's the column you want to pay attention to but also on this side of the notice you get information about the public hearing dates and times and a phone number contact for all of the taxing authorities you you pay tax too. And that's your opportunity to attend a public hearing, to hear about their budget plans, but also to call them if you want to and find out you know, what's been approved and what's going to happen over the next year. Remember, it's just like your house. You're setting a budget for the following year. So this is, as, this is the money they will collect come November from my friend Ann Gannon, who will collect all that money and then distribute it out to these same taxing authorities who are listed here. But I I also want to show you on the reverse side, the blue, a blue side, as we call it, you'll have your market value in yellow. Very important. You look at your market value. This is the value that my office places on your property each year, and it is based on the transactions that are occurring in the market. I don't think it's lost on anyone that the market has been very strong the last three years. And this year, as we set values based on January 1st, that was no different. It was based on the 2022 market, which was still very fast pace and some quite high values. We're seeing some tempering to that now in 2023, probably primarily because of the interest rate increases. However, also it just seems as if everybody is sort of settling down a little bit from COVID, which is good. I mean, we don't want our market running too, too fast. It can be kind of scary when it does that. So uh, we're watching that closely. We've already had the first half of 23, which will help us set the 24 values. But also just look at the blue areas as well. Blue areas is where you see your actual taxable value and also your benefits. Very important that you check that everything that you've applied for, whether you're a new homestead filer, whether you're a new filer for a disability exemption, anything, it's listed on this because this is sort of your uh, receipt, if you will, of what you've applied for. So make sure you look for it. I also wanna draw your attention back again to your market value. If you feel your market value is incorrect, you have this opportunity and only this opportunity to file a petition with the Value Adjustment Board, which is a board independent from my office. It's actually made up of county commissioners, a school board member, and a couple members at large, public community members at large. And they oversee a mediation process, if you will, where special magistrates who are appraisers listen to your information about why you think your property value should be lower. They listen to our information about how we set your value. And then they come to a decision that is binding on us 
Okay, so it's a good process, but you only have 25 days from when you receive this notice to be a part of that process. So don't miss it. The deadline is on it. It's sept in September, but the deadline's on the notice. So it'll tell you, so I think it's September 12th this year. And you want to make sure you file a petition in that window if you want to appeal your value. It's a very fast window. That's why I tell you. But also important, these notices will be available on our website. Many of you probably know about our website, PAPA. They'll be on our website as of August 18th, which is the day we mail them. So you'll look that morning and it'll say 2023 proposed notice. You can pull it up there. And that way you don't even have to walk to your mailbox in this heat, right? And get your actual paper notice. You can just look for it there. We've got an insert. It looks like this, nice, bright and colorful. So look for that. It tells you a bit more about the new things this year. The biggest, neatest thing this year is the increase in the widows and widowers exemption amount, which the legislature approved last year went from $500 in value to $5,000 in value, which means it went from being a $10 savings to a $100 savings. I mean, that's huge. That, that's enormous in one year. We are very pleased to support that, the Property Appraisers Association. And I want to make sure that any of you who might not have already received the widow's benefit where it's automatically been increased by us if you've already got it but if you don't have it make sure you contact our office we have a great office on atlantic in delray i like to say we are the safest office in palm beach county because we share space with the sheriff <laughs> he's our next door neighbor but uh which we love but do come by and see us anytime. We're right there across from Kings Point in the Lakes of Oriole, right in that corner of Cumberland and Atlantic on Delray. Nice office. It's always quiet. We love seeing you. Our appraisers who work your area, who work all of the South End are in that office. So come in anytime. And with that, I'll stop. Uh, Lori, thanks again so much for having me. Uh, I know uh, Anne is, if, Anne and I, by the way, we work very closely together and we are always talking to one another. So know that part of good government, I think, is just that sort of cooperation. And we have that in Palm Beach County. Uh, we're all very supportive of one another. So it's a good thing for you all as our, as our voters and our public. Thank you again. Thank you very much for all that information. And also thank you for having Mike and Howie, they come to our meeting. So in September, our September 6th meeting, we'll be seeing our property appraisers office present at our meetings that always answer questions. That's terrific. And if I can, if you ever have new residents who need to file for Homestead, it's a great opportunity. You can bring them to an Alliance meeting and they can file for Homestead right there. Howie will take their application right, right on site. So they get a, a two for one. They get a great meeting, learning something, and then they also get to file for Homestead. So anybody new to your community, just bring them on in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to see you too. You too. You we too. Now Yes, we are now going to get a little overview of the tax collector's office with our our sure. very own Palm Beach County tax collector, Ann Gannon, who is sharing the screen, and we are going to see a PowerPoint presentation. And there it is. I am not giving my usual boring presentation because I told them that people just couldn't handle another one of those. Um, so we're going to go through a little fun facts that you all may not know about our office. Um, it is, go to slide two. And we'll talk about, um, in June, our client uh, research, client care and research center, which is actually a call center, um, answered 19,000, over 19,000 calls. Um, and we are adding additional employees uh, as we can find them, because as you all know, uh, it is very hard to find um, employees at this time. Uh, I don't, don't know what, what has happened to the people that want to work, but it's been really difficult. So, um, and the more employees we have the, in our call center, the faster your calls will get answered um, and the less hang up calls we will get. Uh, and I'm sure you all know that the top five states um, where newly licensed Florida drivers previously resided are New York, New Jersey, 
California, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. Now, I'm sure when these people moved here, they didn't quite understand our insurance issue, but they should be understanding it in the next six months as they continue to receive bills from insurance companies. Uh, each month, we electronically distribute more than 40,000 satisfaction surveys to clients who visit our service centers in person or contact our office by phone. And that process involves um, <coughs> rating our office. We actually have about a 65% uh, positive rating. And the questions that we receive where we haven't fulfilled our pledge of excellent service, we actually go back and contact all those clients to see if there's additional assistance that we can provide them. Understanding that many people come in our office unprepared, um, we have actually created a new process that if you're coming in our office for a driver's license, there's a little tab you pull down and it tells you the documents you must bring to the office. Otherwise, if you don't check each one of those documents, that you have them and can bring them in our office, you are unable to make an appointment now. Um, unless it's an emergency and you've lost your driver's license, but you still, if you're not real ID compliant, you would still have to bring all those documents into our office. And 65% of property owners pay their property taxes during the month of November. Uh, I would say 80% 80, 80 of those 65% are mortgage companies that transfer the money to us at quarter till 12 um, at the, uh, in November at the last date. And the, on average, we service more than 3,000 clients each day in our six service centers. Uh, Laura, you can go to the next slide. And I don't think I, I really need to go through this. Um, I think Dorothy does very well explaining this, but this is how your property tax uh, is calculated. Um, if you have questions about it, you can call our office, or I'm sure you could call Dorothy's office, and they could walk you through the process. But it's pretty easy to do um, when you look at uh, the value of your property, which Dorothy explained is in the upper left-hand uh, corner on the back sheet. I think it's the back sheet. Um, and how um, the exemptions and then your taxable value and how it works through the process. So it's really pretty easy to understand. Um, you can go to the next um, slide. This is actually our 21 tax season. We've just uh, wrapped up all the information for our 2022 tax season where we have to balance our, our books is basically what we're doing. But we distribute about $4.5 billion to taxing authorities. Um, and as you know, the, the monies that we collect for all the transactional fees, I think it's about $78 million. And we spend about 35 and the rest of that is remitted back on a, a pro rata share basis to the authorities that we collect on behalf of. But, and, and I will also um, share with you that about 52 or 53% of the county's budget is the sheriff's budget. Um, so I know everybody thinks the county gets all this money when, in fact, they don't really. Um, over half of it goes to the sheriff for law enforcement in our county. And that number is uh, increasing yearly with the increase in population in our county. Um, as um, our county commissioner, the vice mayor, can attest to, the more people you bring, the more services you have to provide. And many times, I don't think that folks who make these decisions are cognizant of that fact, that it then in fact increases our staff and our costs. So um, if we could keep from paving every piece of land in our county, we might be better off sometimes, but that's not my decision. So um, I, I don't get involved in that. I just try and do my job. Could you go to the next slide, Lori? This is giving back. Um, that it, it's what I was talking about. We're an independent agency funded by commissions and fees on services, and it's not funded by tax dollars. Uh, for each transaction that we do, we are, uh, I would say, awarded the fee, but that's 
when you talk about getting $6.25 for a driver's license, it doesn't pay for the services of, of providing it, our staff time, their salaries, the buildings. So what really happens is those people who pay property taxes end up paying for the cost of state services that the legislature has um, actually required us to provide. And I don't see that changing anytime in the future because the driver's licenses and titles and registrations have actually not been increased. The driver's license is 1985. Um, so you can understand why that doesn't even meet the cost of running our office or providing the service to the public. So, um, but we did um, return about 50.3, million dollars to the counties and the school board and all of the taxing authorities. Um, you want to go to the next? Okay, we're going to have a little pop quiz, hopefully. Um, can you, well, you don't have to guess because this is the number of pieces of mail that our office sends out yearly. Um, and it tells you there what it's made up of. And if you look, I think you'll see that motor vehicles is the highest um, number of pieces that we send out. It's um, it, it's pretty amazing. Those are titles, registrations, anything to do with um, motor vehicles um, that we send out. Uh, and you can see that we send out local business tax, uh, 114,000, and that is increasing because we're seeing a increase in the number of new businesses that are um, requesting a license to operate in Palm Beach County. Our tangible tax, which is a tax on furniture and fixtures in a business, um, mobile home decals, and other, which is miscellaneous and property tax. There was, even though Dorothy said, I think she, she dealt with 650,000 properties, there's a difference between um, the number of parcels she deals with and the actual um, property tax uh, bills that we send out. And it's a calculation based on um, some other things. So uh, disabled uh, persons is the little permits that you have, that you hang on your um, car. Those have to be uh, renewed. And the only way to renew them is to get a note that's officially signed by your doctor uh, you're not allowed to get more than one, um, and that's why you get the hanging one so you can transfer it to your car. And that's really a state law. We have no authority to change that at all. Uh, Laura, you want to go to the next one? As you can see, driver's license calls were the highest number of calls we received in our call center. Um, and the rest of them, mostly property tax, driver's license, and motor vehicles. You know, what's challenging about this is most of this information is available on our website and all they have to do is go to it. But as you know, people are not inclined to do any research um, on their own. Uh, and so they just call our office or they may call Dorothy's office, I don't know. I'm sure they do with some of the questions on property taxes, but it's pretty challenging. Um, because we're uh, consistently looking for ways to educate the public and decrease those calls, which in the long run would de decrease the cost of running our call center. Um, but we have, um, we feel like we have a good handle on that now. And we know that there are people who get angry because we don't answer it within so many minutes. But um, as I said, we, we have an additional, um, 18 people that we could hire in our call center. And we just have a problem um, them passing the testing to get in our agency and the training because it takes really about a year to train an employee uh, within our structure to learn all the lines of business that we have. And it's very challenging, um, but we, we, we're trying. Um, that's all we can say to the public. Um, you want to move to the next one? Uh, and the TCO center that processed the most transactions in fiscal year 2021-22. It's actually our, our Green Acres, our central service center. Um, as you know, in February, our PGA uh, new office is coming online, we hope. Um, we've had some uh, challenges 
receiving some of the um, construction and building um, um, pieces that we've needed to complete this building, um, such as compressors and stuff like that due to the pandemic. But it's really uh, supposedly our best guesstimate will be February of next year. And we're really excited about it because it's it's going to really change the service in that area. I don't know if any of you have ever been to that office, but you have to go in the back door. Um, it's Or you go in and the guards uh, can search you um, because there is a court system there with judges in any of our other offices now to the passage of the gun bill last year. You cannot, we, we are not allowed to search or ask if you have a gun. Um, but in that office, that practice is still current because there are judges, the judiciary in that building. So hopefully getting out of that building um, and being able to process people coming into our service center more quickly will be helpful to the service in that area. Um, you want to go to the next one? Um, this is the one we're always trying to change. The percentage of reservations made um, and people don't show up is about 33%. Uh, we're working on a new appointment system and a queuing system that we're going to tie to two other of our systems. It's probably going to be a year and a half before that comes online. We have just um, um, issued, not issued a contract at this point, but we are getting ready to sign a contract with a software company in North Mississippi who, who does excellent work. And it's probably going to cost us a million dollars to do this, but it will certainly, certainly help us and cut down on these no-show rates. Right now, we have people that make 10 appointments and our staff has to spend a week every month going through all the appointments and deleting them. Um, and they make those because they want to make sure they can come and they're not really sure when they can come. But what it really does is it takes up appointment time that other people could receive and get them into our office as quickly as possible because some days the uh, lag time is a little long. Um, anyhow, you want to go to the next one, uh, Lori? <clears throat> Online transactions continue to increase, and that is part of our business plan to transfer more and more to online. Um, I, I will tell you a, a funny story. The last three weeks, because of a lightning strike in my neighborhood, our internet went down along with my TV and internet. And AT&T keeps sending me this little notice that I can call an AI person and I can tell them what my problem is. And I just type in, I want a real person. I want a real person because they would never understand. I finally hired someone to do it um, because I just, I couldn't do that anymore. But um, our goal is to increase as many of our transactions to online, which actually should decrease the number of employees. But then you have to actually look at how many new houses are being built because for every house, it's 2.3 people that will come in our office um, every year and, and use our services. But we are working on that. Our um, tourist development tax, we're creating a new and improved website for that, which we need to do. But we that website last year collected about $75 million for our county. And as you know, uh, TV tax actually is... Um, given to the cultural uh, community in Palm Beach County, which helps all their budget in the art community. So we're really excited about that because that the, the easier we make it for people to pay online, the better it is for us. Um, and I was wrong, it's $77 million. So anyhow, we can go on, but it does go up. Um, as you can see, it goes, starts going up in November and and recedes about June or July. Um, but hopefully it's become more year round service TV. Um, and we've worked with the realtors um, to create a welcome home Palm Beach County. It's a little booklet that we've redesigned that tells you how to do everything you need to do when you move to Palm Beach County, um, like 
um, vehicle registration, home set exemption, um, education options, everything. And we just actually uh, printed those and um, sent them out last month. So we're, we're really excited about that because um, it's, it's actually a good resource for anybody moving to our county. Um, and one of the other things that we do quarterly is we go to the SOE office and we pull all the new voter registrations, um, whether they're R's, D's, I's or whatever, and we send them a little card about how to access our services and here's how you do it and welcome to our county. Um, so that's been helpful. Um, but what's interesting is typically we have about 3,200 people a quarter that come through our um, come to our county, new registrations or movements from other counties. The first quarter of this year, we actually had 23,000 people that we sent cards to. So you can see the increase with the new construction and people moving to Florida. Um, it, it's gonna be challenging on our roads. So Lori, you keep on the Department of Transportation. <laughs> Yeah. Because all these things fit together and they really do challenge our quality of life. Um, and we're here to serve you. Um, you can get us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, and our client advocate. If any of you have an issue, you can email us at, and we'll get back to you within 48 hours. Uh, our website, we're in the process of making it more user-friendly and accessible. Uh, which will probably come in a couple months. So uh, thanks all of you for the opportunity to serve you. Um, we're pretty excited about it. And most of my staff um, loves working with Dorothy's office. Uh, and I'm serious. I mean, I know people think that we're all just um, saying that, but her office has been so helpful to us. And I, I hope that we've been just as helpful to her. So thank you all. Great. Oh, well, well, let's see. Here's a final view of our two speakers this morning. And I don't see any uh, Q&A. There was just one that was a statement there. Uh, that's all. And uh, no, you, I guess you explained everything very well and they know where to go to get the information. So thank you both so much. And thank you, Senator Berman, for, for being here today. And, and I see Vice Chair Brill still here and our first responders. Remember, one final comment and is September 6th. That's right. our meeting. Our first meeting is going to be in person at the South County Civic Center. We will be discussing the insurance issue and have a panel discussion with our senators and representatives and our mayor even, there's going to be a panel discussion there and you'll be able to ask questions of our elected officials and tell them briefly any little story you might have about insurance. I'm getting them every day. I'm getting stories. And I do say now that the alliance is the canary in the coal mine because we hear about it first. And now the newest thing is, is people are having issues with fees, HOA and COA fees, dues that are due every month. They're going up because they have to go up because the insurance rates have gone up. That's one major, major issue. So we're hearing problems with that. And I'm looking at all ways to help people subsidize their monthly fees. But there are programs in the county that, uh, that you can use to, uh, to subsidize heat and air conditioning, air conditioning units, things like that. But actual subsidizing people with their fees for their uh, HOAs or COAs, that doesn't, doesn't exist yet. But maybe we'll work out something with our legislators that they can do something about that to help people who need it. Thank you all so much for attending. And we will see you in September. Thank you. We're going to end the meeting now. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Lori. Take Thanks, care. Lori.